happy birthday to Mary. Uh, you know, I, I can't say happy birthday to her in real life. So, um, you know, I decided to say it here. Yeah, forget about it. Hey, eggs, what's up? And today I'm going to do an album review on the King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard album, Nonagon Infinity. So, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard is the crazy famous, Austri not crazy famous, but crazy, comma, famous, sort of famous, Australian psychedelic rock band. And they had been releasing a lot of studio albums since their formation. And notably, Quarters, uh, with an exclamation mark, so it's Quarters! And uh, I'm in your mind fuzz. Uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about these albums, so let me just take a, take a second here to talk about these two albums. These two albums are two of the most essential albums from them before this one. And uh, on Quarters, while I don't think it's a great album, I love the first track. But I think the first track off of Quarters is amazing, and the track title is The River. And it's this 10-minute long, long-winded, multifaceted, uh, relaxing, psychedelic experience. That's super smooth and groovy, and it's in this constant 5-4 time signature that, for some reason goes really well with the melodies and man it's just so relaxing and dreamy and it's so acidic and I love it it's so sweet and then we have I'm in your mind fuzz which is in my opinion an amazing album the first four tracks is sort of like this medley and um it's really catchy really tight really intense really fun but this album tops it off it is even more intense, even more fun, super raw, super in your face, super loud, super wild, super visceral. It's truly, truly adrenaline pumping. You know, turning this album on would instantly make you explode because it's just so intense and exciting and energetic. And, um, damn, what really makes this album special, however? are the seamless, super smooth, and seamless transitions between the tracks. And uh, especially at the end, uh, the last track, Road Train, transitions seamlessly to the album opener, uh, Robot Stop. And that feature allows the album to be looped forever, nonstop, period, nonstop. And uh, there are nine tracks on this album, so it's Nonagon, and it, you can play it for infinite times, so it's Infinity, so it lives up to its title, Nonagon Infinity. And, um, damn, the performance is blistering, blaring, tight, loud, I love the bustly, busy bass, the tight and super speed drums, the keyboards, the flute, the harmonicas and all sorts of other instruments, as well as the crazy layers of guitars. They add so much texture and color to the album. And at the same time, they're just so wild and visceral and insane and whack. It's such an experience. It's like you're on drugs, but at the same time, you're going at, at high speed. You're inside a rocket you're being launched into space. That's how this album feels like. How listening to this album feels like. And um, the lyrics on this album are also really interesting because they sort of dive into this uh, occult theme. And um, they are, they're not necessarily poetic, but they are definitely abstract and weird and freaky and almost a little religious there's almost a, a, a tinge a slight tinge of of satanism especially at the last track road train but uh, again i don't think king gizzard is a satanic band i think it's just uh, a concept a tool a theme used to make the album even more appealing and freaky and weird and um overall i think this album is great it's amazing the guitar riffs are awesome, they're visceral, 
and uh, together with the weird time signatures, I I find it really impressive that they can make an album with such with with these m many odd time signatures. They don't use eight eight or four four that often on this album. They use time signatures like seven eight five four eleven eight um ten eight. The album starts off with robot stop. Nanagon Infinity opens the door. Nanagon Infinity opens the door. And this phrase is a phrase that is repeated uh, for countless times on this album as a central album refrain. And I think that's a really cool idea. And the album opener, Robot Stop, is... Oh my gosh. It just lights me on fire. And it lights anyone who's listening on fire. It's super tight, super raw, super intense. The bass of this thing is just destructive and super fun. And I I just love how it transitions to, from the very uh, tight and catchy 8-8 eight, eight to the more disorienting 7-8 beat very smoothly. And uh, there's just so much tension in this track, and that's why this track is such a fun and great and unforgettable album opener. And the music video. Whew. Then the track smoothly transitions onto the second track, Big Thick Wasp, which, uh, is, which basically has the same chords and the same pace as Robot Stop, but uh, it has a more odd and wondrous riff, and it's more freaky in terms of tone. It's a big thick wasp. It's all I see. And um, it's it's such a such a fun track. Once again, like for the first four tracks on the album, it's this nonstop, super speed, super intense, exciting, energetic blast, nonstop. And uh, I mean, they, I I couldn't catch a breath when I was listening to this album, the first four tracks. I couldn't even catch a single breath. It's pretty crazy, right? You know, figure of speech. I did breathe when I listened to the album, but, you know, the figure of speech. And in order for the track Big Fig Wasp to transition onto Gamma Knife smoothly, uh, they had to do the, do the thing where they all collectively shout, Woo! And it's just such a wild and fun expression. And they also had to do the refrain, Nanagon Infinity opens the door. And on Gamma Knife, um, by the way, Gamma Knife is the first King Giz track I've ever listened to. And no, it's the first track on the album that I've listened to. The first, is it? No, 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 no. Uh, Nuclear Fusion is the first track, but this is the, yeah. Yeah, anyway, uh, damn. Gamma Knife is my favorite track off of this album. It's the catchiest, it's the speediest, and the wildest. It's truly, truly insane. The track sort of starts off with these lone guitars, and there's a lot of tension building up, and then as it hits uh, a point, it just explodes and blasts into these thick layers of instruments. It's pure, insane mayhem. <laughs> And the music video, the music video, whoever directed and wrote this music video, awesome, awesome music video, super whack, super insane. And the way the track ends off is also really ingenious. It just sort of descends chord by chord, key by key. And it sort of descends into people, vultures, which is basically the part two of Gamma Knife, but it's also the fourth track. And it's the most sinister and urgent sounding track on the entire record. I love the soaring guitars, the epic melodies, and the very passionate vocals. People, vultures, got a ferocious final hearing. And again, the music video, it's just whack. It's just this, it's like cheesy 80s action film, like terrible 80s action film, but mixed with 
all sorts of weird religious creatures. It's it's truly a ride of um. I can't even describe it. And then we transition smoothly into the fifth track, Mr. B. And um, it's sort of a calm after the storm track. But even though it's sort of more calm, it still doesn't take away from the fact that it's a very catchy and funky and on point track. We get a very steady 5-4 time signature beat, which is awesome. And we got some sweet organs and some really, really nice flute on this track. You know, uh, by the way, um, you know, secret. Um, I, I knew how to play flute. Knew because I haven't played flute for like f four years now. So, I mean, if I... If I pick up the flute again, this is probably the first track that I'll that I'll play too. So, and uh, I also really like how uh, weird and tongue in cheek this track sounds. And then we have Evil Death Roll, which is around seven minutes long. Yes, it's a little too long winded in my opinion, and the track itself is not as special as other tracks on the album, but yet it's still a very energetic and consistent track with some tight riffs and nice drum beats so it's not bad uh but i think it's decent at best and then we have invisible face which is an oddball on the track list because um at the one minute mark it just becomes this super smooth jazzy instrumental thing and i i love it oh my gosh before the one minute mark, we get these tight grooves and syncopated beats, which are amazing. But then after the one minute, one and a half minute mark, it the track kind of kind of stops. But we get the quiet kick drums in the back still going. And then it's just this wall, this wall of, of jazzy. Yeah, well, not jazzy, but I guess... A, a, I guess more smooth, tropical, I guess a little reggae-ish sort of psychedelic uh, instrumental bit. And it just, it just pops up so smoothly. It's candies to the ears. It's amazing. And then we have the penultimate track, Wah Wah, which dives into the heavy, drunken, psychedelic sound even more. And the chord progression of this track is probably the weirdest on the entire album. But still, I, I like the track. And then the album ends off with Row Train, which is an amazingly fiery and exciting album. Ender. The vocals, they're devilish. The lyrics, they are even more devilish. But the thing that I love the most about Road Train is the percussions. They are purely ingenious. They are sort of uh, chugging back and forth, up and down a little bit, because the title of the track is Row Train, so the percussions, they are imitating a train. And it's just going on and on and on and on, but it doesn't feel tired, it doesn't feel stale. It gets more and more tense, more and more exciting, and it really builds up the speed. And when the bass and the guitars come in, they really sound like a train engine chugging it's it's really driving to be honest and the way the track ends off and it glides super smoothly into into robot stop is just stunning to be honest so uh yeah i i love this album 
a lot. There's not much to say about this album other than it's a very adrenaline pumping, exciting and energetic album that you can loop on forever and uh, I highly recommend this album. So uh, yeah, um, my, f my, uh, my least favorite track here is Evil Death Roll and my favorite track here is Gamma Knife. I'm giving King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizards Nonagon Infinity an 8 out of 10. So have you listened to the album from 1 to 10 how much you rate it? Like if you like it and subscribe if you want more. Happy birthday to Mary. Uh, you know, I, I can't say happy birthday to her in real life. So, um, you know, I decided to say it here. Yeah, forget about it.